Hello, this is Alex, um, and I'm here today to talk about the uh, Babylon 5 CCG game, the collectible card game, uh, which came out in the 90s and it lived till 2001 or 2002. Um, this game um, is uh, simulating the uh, Babylon 5 uh, story or possibilities within the Babylon 5 universe. Babylon 5 is uh, one of my favorite TV series of all time and I love this game to bits. So um, let's look how it's played, uh, maybe go through the basics of it and then we will uh, dig deeper into the gameplay itself. Um, the game uh, is a card game, so you play with cards. Um, um, first I would like to go through which types of cards there are in the game. I have uh, all of them, many of them here. Um, the first uh, typical card type is a character. Um, there is a name of the character, in this case William Morgan Clark. Uh, he's a human character, so the type of the card is at this, um, in this little, under the, under the picture. And there is the effect of the card um, stating that he's a human faction ambassador, and he's a vice president, and what, it, what he does when he enters play and how he can be played. Um, the uh, characters have also stats, abilities, which are on this right side or left side of the picture. Um, the first one is the, um, the little D, it means diplomacy. The second one is I, which is intrigue. Um, and there are different ones uh, which are missing here is uh, Psy. Um, uh, psionic abilities, telepathic abilities, and the leadership. I have a different card here, which also have, has all of them, and it's for example Alfred Bester. Um, he has diplomacy of strength 2, intrigue 5, C uh, mm, of 13, and leadership of 2. Um, there's also a little bubble here down there, um, how, down here on the card. It's the value of the card, of the cost of the card. So you will need 12 influence uh, to bring this card into game, into the game. Um, oh well, he, actually this one not because he cannot be sponsored, but we will come to that. Um, generally, each card which has a value uh, and the cards referring to the cost of the card refers to this little bubble here. Um, there are also sometimes marks on the card, which are here in the left uh, lower corner. In this case, there is a destiny mark and uh, he also has two conspiracy marks. Um, William Morgan Clark had uh, a shadow uh, mark and a doom mark and a conspiracy mark. And there are different other types of marks also. For example, a strife mark, as seen here on the on the Jakar card, here down. Uh, or a Volon tainted one here down at uh, the Volon mark on the Len. Um, so these are the characters. Uh, they are the most, one of the most important pieces of the game. Um, the second type of cards, uh, which also stay in game and are really important, are the fleets. In this case, for example, a Centauri fleet, uh, deep space fleet of the Centauri, uh, has a M, which means uh, um, military strength of five and it would cost six influence to bring into game. Um, M is military and is only on, on um, fleet cards and also on location cards. Uh, speaking of location cards, um, this is for example a location card called Quadrant 14. It's a non-location so only a non-player can play it. It has a military of 15 and some kind of an effect text and also it costs six influence to bring into game. So what else does that? There are um, enhancements. Enhancements enhance other cards and they also say directly on the card which card they enhance or which kind of types of cards they enhance. For example, this is a wasteland, it's a location enhancement, means that it has to target a location. Um, this one, for example, the eye, it's an artifact, it's a Centauri character enhancement, means that it has to um, target a Centauri character. It can only be played on that one. Um, so these are those. Then we have uh, groups. For example, a, a drug group, which can only be played by a drug player. So all, all the time, always when there is a name of the card, can, it can only be played on uh, by the player who is uh, playing the faction 
designed or destined uh, by the card. And it costs, for example, seven, seven influence to bring into game. Um, then those are those are main, mainly the cards which um, are brought into game and stay in the game. Um, there is one other type of cards which is uh, which are agendas. Agendas are cards uh, which uh, stipulate your main goal or main reason your faction is uh, building towards. Um, for example, this one is uh, it's called Peace in Our Time. It's a general one. There is no um, affiliation. Uh, so anybody can use it and it says count every three points of Babylon 5 influence as one power target a race you may apply 10 influence plus one per fleet of the race in play to lower the race tensions towards one other race by one means it brings more peace and stability into the galaxy and uh, would work for Babylon 5 strategies um, the important thing here is uh, that we have influence and power in game in the game mm, but we'll talk about it in a, in a couple of seconds. So, other types of cards which there are, um, there are conflict, uh, which are different of different type. The type is again on the card itself. For example, here it's an intrigue conflict, that would be a military conflict or a diplomacy conflict. There are also leadership conflicts and uh, psi conflicts, uh, telepathic conflicts and uh, conflict without any type which stipulate uh, which the, the um, uh, conditions of the conflict and when it succeeds and when it fails are stipulated on the card itself. Um, conflicts are vital in the main game of Babylon 5 CCG as they provide you mostly with the main source of uh, income. Income means influence. Um, so you winning by winning conflict, you get more and more influence in game, and thus uh, crawl towards uh, victory. So the only uh, the way we do have different types of conflict is that um, each type of conflict designates uh, what type of abilities can be used in the conflict. For so if it is a diplomacy conflict, only diplomacy or characters with diplomacy can uh, uh, participate. If it's a military conflict, only military means fleets can participate. If there is uh, intrigue conflict, only characters with intrigue can participate in it. Of course, there are other cards which allow you to enter those conflicts, but those are not the standard uh, way of uh, dealing with these. So, there is also contingencies. Um, contingencies are cards which are brought into play and are also tar targeting, um, are also, do also target uh, different types of cards. For example, there's a conflict contingency means that it will target a conflict uh, when it's played. Okay, the next type of cards are aftermaths. Aftermaths. Um, aftermaths are cards which are played as uh, mm, at resolution of conflicts uh, and they also stipulate when they are played. For example, this is a one aftermath means that it can only be played if the initiator of the conflict has succeeded in playing the conflict and winning it. Um, this also, for example, stipulates that it doesn't have only to be a one conflict, it has to be also a diplomacy or military conflict which was won by the initiator. Then there are lost aftermaths, which means that the conflict had to be lost, or uh, participant aftermaths, which means that it can be played on any participant in the conflict, it doesn't have to be the initiator. Last, uh, the last uh, type of cards are events. Events are like one, oh, one action cards which are mostly um, in play only for the duration of the current round and then they expire. So they are just uh, one-time events. The, the cost of the, conf of the event cards is also on the lower right corner.